election. But let's speak now to uh, Gina Miller, uh, who is uh, leader of the uh, True and Fair Party, because, Gina, um, clearly we're uh, assessing who's voted and where, but there's also a question of those who weren't able to vote, bearing in mind the situation of the ID. And I think the Electoral Commission is saying we've got to look really at what went uh, wrong here. Absolutely right. Thank you for inviting me on, Mark. Um, we knew when the Election Act passed last year that they needed time to bed in the changes that would re require everyone to have certain forms of ID. And it's not universal, the forms of ID that were acceptable. But here in Epsom and Newell, where I'm standing, local people, but actually people around the country, have been emailing us with incidences that are making them very upset because they've been denied their democratic voice, um, ranging from people who you try to use their NHS ID and returned away and said that wasn't good enough, from women who have had a different name on their ID to their marriage certificates, but have gone along with their marriage certificates to prove that they are the same person, but they've been denied a vote and turned away. We've had people with immune problems, uh, suppressed immune systems, who have tried to, to vote with masks on and were told that unless they took their masks off, they wouldn't be able to go in and vote. We've had other incidences of people saying they were told that they could use ID that didn't have a weren't in date, that had, uh, had gone out of date, but they were turned away. So there's definitely issues with the entire system. And what we're seeing is that there wasn't ever a real problem with voter fraud. So we've got a solution that's come in for a problem that didn't really exist that's now creating huge problems, we think, because nobody's collecting the data. We won't know the extent of these problems, but it's got to be sorted out before the general election.